I feel like when you're just on this wave of life and you just follow your intuition where you go, where you feel like you should go, it always leads you in the right place every single time. Because if I didn't take that job that day, I would not be where I am today. I would not have met the people I did. I would not be out networking. I would be in a completely different place, still doing life on my own. Welcome to the Deeper Than Dough podcast. We have Jen Gardner today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, Jen. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. I'm curious, how did you guys get connected? I'll let Jen answer that because <laughs> our stories might be different. Really? Well, we were talking about it and we couldn't even decide. That's why. We didn't he know if it was Zenith to, or Tribe House. He came to Zenith Mastermind, okay. which is a mastermind I help run. But I saw you saved my phone number on Sunday as Power Room. What? Look at it. What's my, I swear my name said Power Room on there. The Power Room Mastermind? No, I did Okay, never mind. Anyway. We can skip that. Yeah, what? thanks. Um, and then I saw you at... We didn't really connect at Zenith in Moab, uh -huh. but then I saw you at Tribe House and I saw you in the hall. And that's when I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I remember Bennett. That's why I walked up to you. Yeah. And we started talking about things. We went straight Got to it. mushrooms, I think. We started talking yeah. about plant medicine. <laughs> that's, that's a very quick escalation and a quick And friendship. how well it can heal. <laughs> we were, we yes. were pretty tight, pretty cool, <laughs> pretty <Yeah>. quick. <laughs> and then you took Ileana, my wife country dancing, right? Yep. Wow. Yep. I was like, I really like you. I need to get to know your wife because yeah. if you're cool, your wife is probably even cooler. Yep. I guarantee it. Sense. And you confirmed that? Yes. And we had a great time. <laughs> yeah. She loved it. We that. had so much fun dancing. I love that. So how long ago was this? Was this December? Something January, November. 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 Pretty quick. And then when we met at an event, let's call it, um, you were kind of explaining some of the stuff that you did with these masterminds and kind of how you got in our connected with all this. I was explaining to you. Yeah. They said, okay. Um, yes, I started helping Jeff Lamb with Zenith Mastermind and I with Zenith Mastermind and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. He hired me as a photographer to come to his event and do photos and the next event I said, I'm not going to come be the photographer this time because I want to come be part of the group. That's awesome. So, it was awesome. And, and what capacity was that? Was that just help mentor, help be facilitate? I just wanted or? to come as a guest. Got it. I wanted to come as a guest and experience it because it's totally different when you're behind the camera. That makes sense. Okay. And one of you, you have several businesses. Zenith? Zenith. That you're is, running? Yep. Event planner for Zenith Mastermind. Okay. Integral photography. We do corporate headshots and corporate events photography. And then um, organized joy we help organize homes and pantries and garages. We help pack people and move them to a new location and unpack everything before they get home from work. I need that. My heart just started beating. <laughs> it's We're going to connect after. <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm in a transition phase where I'm trying to get out of the business and have other people running it. I'm trying to yeah. be the business owner. The e-myth. Yeah. I, I read the e-myth. He inspired me to read it, and I read it, and then I was really angry at him after I read it. <laughs> Why? Why are you angry at me? I was like, dang it. Well, just a lot of things. He was he is a great mirror image for everything I need to see in my life. And so it's really me getting mad at myself, <laughs> and he he takes it like a champ. So when I get you're this guy, yeah, okay. when I get mad at Bennett, he just sits there <laughs> with popcorn, just enjoying the show. It's in kind the, of annoying. <laughs> in the ball pit. In the ball pit. The ball we pit. sit in the ball pit. Um, and Jen, and for Christmas, will tell the story. Why, why, why do you have a ball pit in your room when you don't have any kids under 12? <laughs> I have one. Um, oh, how's the youngest? Wait, 10. Do, okay, do you need 10. a reason to have a ball pit? <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. you. Don't, but, but <laughs> Thank just you. The story. Nobody I needs a reason it. to have a ball story. pit. Okay. In November, I was trying to figure out what to get my kids for Christmas, and I didn't really... Um, I didn't want to give them a bunch of stuff. I'm an organizer. We get rid of stuff. Yep. So I didn't want a, a whole bunch of toys. So I decided to make them a ball pit. So I got online and started researching how to make a ball pit. Could not find anything online. I tried to buy one. You can't buy a ball pit. No. You can buy those little dinky ones, but you can't buy like those a big inflatable one. inflatable ones for right. toddlers. Right. Yeah. And you can't, you can't buy one. So I decided to just make it up in my brain. And I went to Home Depot and bought wood and two by fours and all kinds of stuff. And I painted it white and... I came home and I didn't have any place to put it. So I was like, well, I'm going to have to get rid of my couch. So I got, I had to move the couch, get rid of the couch. And now my living room is a 
big, ginormous and how ball many, pit how many balls in the shape in the of a pit? couch. There's 3,600 balls in the ball pit. <laughs> so amazing. And they're all white. And we've had... The last like three times I've gone there, we've had at least five adults in the ball pit and we just chill there for an hour at least. Yeah, I think we can have up to like eight. It's really good for ADD, man, because you're like sitting there (laughs) and you have the like as you're talking, you have something to play with. You can be throwing at the walls or throwing at each other or just kind of spinning them. It sounds more like therapy. than It really is. It's 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 huge therapy. That's what I was getting at because you don't have the young kids. It's it's for us. It is for us. <laughs> and my magical. kids don't even get in it that much. More of the adults, it's therapy for adults. I'm serious. It's amazing. I think we're all like little kids. Ballpitcouch.com. Seriously, <laughs> it needs to happen. <laughs> That's the next business. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into the entrepreneurship side and what were you doing before? The entrepreneur side. Okay. So <laughs> um, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was a PTA president. I stayed home with my kids. And How many kids, by the way? I have four oh, kids. Okay, cool. So I have four kids. Uh, a girlfriend invited me to a slumber party, which is an in-home party for women, okay. lotion, laundry, all that fun stuff. So no, I went to it. I never invited those. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's totally not fair. But I went to it, and when I got there, we had such a great time. It was so fun. And the lady at the end said, you should sell this for a living. And I said, no way. I am too shy. I can't even talk to my neighbor. And when you call it real quick, a slumber party, we're talking MLM. Come at my house and let me pitch you something, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just make sure. But she <laughs> acted like it was, it's called, it was called slumber parties. Okay. Right. So she acted like, like she said, Jen, you would be so amazing at this. You should sell this stuff. And I said, there's no way I could sell it. I can't even talk to my neighbor, let alone stand in front of a whole bunch of women and talk about romance enhanced products. There's no way. And she looked at me and she's like, you would be so good. So I fed, I remember that energy exchange and I fed off that belief in her. And I went home and she's, it was $250 to buy a kit. So I (laughs) bought the kit and she said, it's like owning your own business. So I thought, I don't know how to own my own business. I've never done that before. So I'm going to Google it. So I got on Google and Google said it costs between 40,000 and 200,000 to start a business. So I thought, okay, that's a lot. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't really have the money right now, but I do have an American Express credit card. So <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> so I went with the low end, and I bought $40,000 in product. Okay. <laughs> so just... that was the beginning to so much in my life. <laughs> so I bought the product, and the next day the company called and said, why? Or the company called and said, did you mean to place this order? And I was like, of course I did. I want to be successful. And they're like, okay, we'll ship it out. I thought that was a stupid question that they asked me. So the next week, they I lived in Twilla at the time, and the next week I was in Salt Lake, and I got home that evening, and the Twilla County Sheriff Department knocked on my door. And I answer it, and he said, the UPS driver, the UPS truck driver came up here today to drop off your packages, and you weren't home, and his entire truck was full of your boxes. And so he came to my house and asked if he could store them all in my garage so he didn't have to take them back to the Salt Lake Port. And I was, like, so humiliated. I was like, I hope he never finds out what is in those boxes. Right? Anyway, so I get them all back over my house. I get them all in my garage, and I thought, all right, this is so cool. I own a business now. I totally own a business because I have all this product. And I start opening boxes and I thought, crap, how am I going to hide this from my kids? I can't have this around my children. So I went to Home Depot. Uh, What what, what are the products? Like lotion, lingerie, bedroom accessories, all kinds of fun stuff. It's not like sex toys. Like sex toys. Oh, it is like sex toys. Yes. The whole spectrum. I'm trying to say it in a nice way. I just... Yes. Let's get it out there. <laughs> it if it's a dildo, it's a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I was so embarrassed because I didn't even know what half these products were. That's okay. You okay. I was right. so embarrassed, but I had $40,000 of stuff in what, my garage. What was the company called? Slumber Parties. Okay. Okay. It it, makes that's sense. what it was called. Yeah. Um, so I decided to go to Home Depot and I bought locking closet closet shelves. I bought locking closet shelves to put in my garage and I lined my garage with these shelving. And then I started putting all the product in organizing it, which was actually my first time I ever organized anything. It was my first organizing job. So I organized all the products in there, labeled them with buckets and bins and everything. And I get it all done a couple weeks later. And I was like, crap, now what do I do? Now I have to actually talk to humans. This sucks. So I called my best friend. She tells me she'll do a party for me. 
I show up at her house to do a party and I stand up there and I was like, all right, ladies, I don't know what any of this stuff is. I don't know what any of this stuff does. I just have a lot of it and I hope you all buy something. <laughs> Honesty is key. Right? <laughs> so I start passing products around, showing them this stuff. We go in the back room and we're in the back room and I ended up selling $200 of product that night. Yes. So I'm doing the math in my head. I make a 50% discount, right? <laughs> so I made $100. <laughs> Imagine how much I have to pay back to get this investment paid. So I booked two parties that night and I booked two parties at that party, three at the next. And it was like ants on my calendar. It just like blew up. This was August of 2008. By December 2008, I had sold $67,000 in product. I was the top new consultant in the company. They sent me to Alaska on a cruise, Baton, Louis, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to walk a red carpet. It, it just opened up my eyes to so many possibilities. I had no idea what was possible. So it changed my world. What do you attribute that to? Was it like <laughs> well, the biggest life lesson of that, about a month after I started, I decided I wanted to quit. I told my husband, I'm quitting. Owning a business is way too hard. I don't know why anyone in the world would ever want to do it. It's awful. And he looked at me and he said, you're not quitting. We owe more in a minimum payment on our credit card than we do on our house payment. Yep. And it was that point I thought, you're right, I can't quit. Because everything before that point that got hard, I quit. Yep. And so that was the biggest life lesson for me through that whole thing is if I'm going to jump in, I'm going to do it all the way. Can we just have a moment for spouses that um, <laughs> let's just walk this through of like, hey, hun, I need $40,000 on the credit card to start this business. And it sounds like it was supportive. I didn't tell him I did it. Though, which is even better <laughs> part of the story. Like, yeah, I didn't. I just did it because I was like, well, if anything's going to sell, this is going to sell better than Tupperware. Yeah. You've nailed that. Right. <laughs> So, okay. So I did okay, it. <laughs> walking it back, sixty-seven thousand. That's five months. Five months later, mm -hmm. and are you like, let's go harder, or like, what? Where does this? Well, where does this leave you? it was you're interesting because I learned sex toys. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> like, people are oh, wanting man. the product. We could go really deep <laughs> in this conversation. How deep you want to go? Not that deep because um, okay, I have thanks. so many other questions. Okay, for, <laughs> okay, all right, we're good. Yeah, so that's how that happened. The next year, um, actually in September that year, I went to my upline's house and she had us do a vision board. And I didn't know what that was, but I cut out all these things that I wanted and put them on this board. Mm -hmm. And I put them in front of my toilet and every single day I stared at it, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things was I wanted to have another baby. I wanted a Garmin GPS for my car. That was before they were on phones. I sound so old. I feel old by saying that. Um, and I had all this stuff on there. Well, by the end of the year, I had achieved every single thing on that list besides a boob job. That was the only thing I did mm -hmm. not, I didn't uh, get. And the next year when I created another one, I didn't even put a boob job on there. I had decided I didn't want it. So I thought it was fascinating that I had achieved everything and they were all things I never thought I could ever have. Yeah. They were all things I did not believe I could ever get. And the funny thing is, what I'm hearing is it had nothing, it really didn't matter the product. It was just something that was presented to you, but it's not right. like you picked that because you're like, oh, this is what I'm passionate about. It's just, it was an opportunity. No. <laughs> you jumped on it and it didn't matter the product. You learned business skills, organization skills, sales skills, communication. I learned so much. Vision board, yeah. you know, all of that. Right. So the next year I got pregnant. I think I got pregnant in January. And I, my sales were super low that year. I didn't do barely anything that year. I was sick and pregnant and I just didn't want yeah. to, but I didn't have to. Yeah. And the next year I picked it up more and it was just kind of like really high and lower all the time. Yeah. So compare that, what were you doing before? And, and then since then you've been doing your own businesses? So after that, I ended up getting divorced in 2014, 2015, I think. And I did that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I met a guy, he wanted me to stop doing it. So I did. And... Um, I decided to go to photography school. So I went to photography school, finished that, got my degree in that. And when I finished, I, um, when I finished photography school, I thought, crap, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to really run a business where I have to actually go find people, right. To, yeah. to grow this business. And there's so many photographers in Utah. Everyone that has a phone is a photographer, right? So I actually had all the kids in the neighborhood come over. I took pictures of them and put them on a flyer. And then I put $25 and I went around to schools all over the city and marketed myself as a preschool photographer. So I passed them out everywhere, so right? Smart. Cause I wanted to do something different. Yeah. And one of them ended up hiring me 
And I remember going to my car and I sat there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm actually a preschool photographer now. So I ended up booking that school and I went home and researched now how to become a preschool photographer because I jumped in, got the job, and now I have to figure out how to do it. As any entrepreneur would do. Right. So congratulations. (laughs) Yeah. So bringing it to joint fulfillment, kind of the topic of the podcast, relate that either the joint fulfillment it gave you or took away from the life being an entrepreneur and and making that transition? Oh man. Um, it was, it's eye opening knowing that we can actually create and do anything we want. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can't do. We just have to make the decision to do it. And I feel like that's where most people get stuck Mm -hmm. is they haven't made the decision. They haven't jumped all the way in because if they've jumped in that it's easy at that point. Yeah. Right. And after I became, after I started doing preschool photos in December that year, I saw an ad on the, I saw an ad on the screen that said top golf event. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go show up at this event. I'm single. I have nothing going on this weekend. And everyone was in there dancing. They were just dancing, having a great time in this ballroom. So I walk in, I just start dancing, just dancing like crazy. I don't know anybody. And at one point, all the music stopped. And the guy at the front says, Hey, if we call your name, we want you to come to the back with us. So I thought, that is so bizarre. So I followed them to the back room, and they said, what position are you hiring for? I was like, I'm not. I'm a preschool photographer. And they said, we want to hire you. This is a hiring event. This is how we hire our people. You see their dance moves? See they they want to, They want you to come authentic. Yeah, uh-huh. that's cool. To figure out who you are. They're like, we don't want you to come with a resume or dressed yeah. up. We want real people in here, and that's who we want to hire. Sounds about right. And I said, I already have a job. And they said, we want to hire you. So I said, the only day I could do it is Fridays. And, and what, he's like, what job was this for? I didn't know at this point. Okay. Right? He's like, the only day. I said, the only day we could do it is Friday. And he said, okay, that's fine. I'll hire you on Fridays. So I left that day with a job at Top Golf, not even knowing my position, not even knowing what I'm getting paid, but it felt like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I did. And the next week, I show up at work with Top Golf, and there was a guy sitting at the bay in a suit with a laptop, and he was just working on his computer. And I thought, that's weird. So a couple weeks, I kept seeing that same guy there, Chris Patch, sitting there at the bay <laughs> with, with his laptop working. And one day, I went over, and I sat by him. I said, what are you doing here? Why are you here every time I come in a suit at Top Golf working on your computer? And he said, I'm a networker. Yeah. I was like, what is a networker? And he said, when I bring, I help bring people together, connect them. And it's a big network of people. And I said, that's so cool. I had no idea there was a group of people that came together to help each other. I thought you did life on your own. And And Utah is such a good networking community. Right. And it it opened up my world to so many things. I got invited to a networking event and now it's a huge part of my life. Can we just take a moment for like coincidences? Or do you believe in like luck or what do you call? <laughs> I feel this like when you're, listening? I feel like when you're just on this wave of life and you just follow your intuition where you go, where you feel like you should go, it always leads you in the right place every single time. Because if I didn't take that job that day, I would not be where I am today. I would not have met the people I did. I would not be out networking. I would be in a completely different place, still doing life on my own. I think it's my, my answer to that. Not that you asked me. <laughs> yeah, Bennett, what do you think about that? <laughs> let's yeah, let's ask you that question. I mean, you look at it, it's, I don't think there's anything to do with luck or coincidence. How many other people showed up to that Top Golf event but didn't get chosen because they didn't dance yeah. and they weren't, yeah. they didn't take the opportunity? How many other people went to Top Golf and saw Chris Patch there, but they didn't talk to him? Right. So I, I don't think it has anything to do with luck or, oppor- or, or luck or coincidence. It's opportunity. Opportunity, you can go into Target right now. I love that. And you go talk to enough people, you will, you will find opportunity if you talk and you open your mouth and you put yourself out there. So I don't think you did anything or I don't think anything special happened to you. The specialness was you acting. It's action. And it's every time. What the hell are you doing here? Like, why, why do you have a suit? So you believe everybody could have action in the agency? (laughs) We're not going to get into that on this podcast. Um, going, I knew that was going to come up at some point. Going to the, ne- to the next question, what in today's life, bringing us fast forward, brings you the most fulfillment? And what are some practices that you implement to show up for yourself and for others? 
I would say serving. Serving brings more joy and fulfillment than anything else ever will. I've never found anything that could top that. That and gratitude. Mm. Those are the two things. When you live your life in gratitude, it opens up so many opportunities and so many doors. What are some examples of serving? Oh, man. Um, I have one that I can give you that I know you do. What's that? What do I do? The hugs. The hugs? Talk about the hugs. What hugs? The free hugs. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. That's the coolest thing. <laughs> I'm going to invite me next time okay. and I'm there with you. So around Christmas, my kids and I, we yeah. write signs that say free hugs and we stand in front of the store and we pass out candy canes and we give anyone free hugs that want a hug. That's cool. And people will come over and start bawling. Like it's crazy to see the emotion that yeah. happens. And there's a lot of people that say, I haven't had a hug in years. Really? Yeah. And they are hugging my kids and hugging me. And it's just, it brings so much joy. And it's one of my kids' favorite. Hmm. So there's, that, that's there's, a huge way of service that you're like, that. well, that's, how do I serve? And it's like, go give people hugs. Like that's a huge service in my eyes. Like really? service to the community <laughs> yeah. of okay. like somebody's there for you. There's so many you know things I, mean? I could give you a plethora of ideas, but like even when it rains, my favorite time is when it's pouring rain outside. You go to Walmart, you go in there and buy as many umbrellas as you can find. And you stand at the door and just pass out people umbrellas as they go outside. It's so fun. And they're just like so excited. They're yeah. like $5 a piece. And, awesome. But to see the smile on their face and how excited they get, it's so worth it. Hmm. I feel like you are always doing stuff like that. And, it's and, so fun. and you do it with your kids, which is what I love so much. At where your your challenges as well. Talk about why you do those and how you. So, so now we're bringing the joy and fulfillment <clears throat> kind of into the family life. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, how do you, how do, you do that with your kids? Because you do such a good job. I want my kids to work hard. I was raised to be a hard worker and I found a lot of value in that. And I want my kids to learn and I want them to serve others. Mm -hmm. I just, there's so much value in that. And I have incredible kids. To be honest, I struggle feeling like I'm a good mom. I try every day to be a better mom. I'm like, okay, what can I do? Every single time my kids go to bed, I think, oh, I didn't spend time with them and I didn't spend enough time with them today. I want to spend more time with them. But then I get stuck in, oh, crap, I got to provide and I got to be on work mode all the time. And so that's probably the hardest thing for me is feeling like I have to be on overdrive all the time to be able to provide for my kids. Being a single mom, I feel like it's always on. And then being able to spend that time, I feel like Bennett's really good at that, at balancing that. And that's, that's one thing I admire a lot in him. But hopefully I can learn My secret is better. marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> Obviously, maybe I need to start yeah, but, like yesterday speaking was court, marijuana. <laughs> day, like nine to five. I didn't even need to say a word. You know, you're just sitting there in a hard chair with sore legs from doing li lifting legs the day before. So anyways, I think I do do a good job, but a lot of it is <laughs> I'm relying on something else. And sometimes it's, it's, it's like a gummy and that gets uh -huh. me out of work mode into chill mode. And with then when I'm in kids. chill mode, and then I'm just hanging kids. out with my kids going out with you know. okay but how do you shut how do you shut that off like what's your tactic of of being able to okay it's five o'clock I'm gonna shut that off one is the calendar just not having anything scheduled after five but the other thing is if you schedule things till five at least me if I if my last meeting ends at five that means I'm working till 5 30 because there's so many texts and emails and all right. that so I try to end where possible closer to four four thirty then so I could kind of catch up everything and okay. and then at five. Just like I'm not scheduling anything like that. And then trying to have a separation because I want to work sometimes. My mind's just freaking racing. Right. And on those days, that's when it's like a gummy or even just CBD okay. just to kind of relax. And chill. Okay. Or the sauna. You have a sauna. Yeah. I feel like that's a good thing to like get your mind off of. The sauna is amazing. Work. And the hot tub. Sauna, hot tub. Oh, yeah, tub. you have the hot tub. <laughs> sauna, hot tub, pop it. <laughs> what else do you need in your life? Mm -hmm. Um. One thing that I feel has helped, one thing as a child, I feel like I never had the opportunity to learn how to go inside and to heal what's inside. Mm -hmm. When I was married, it was, hey, let, I, I got married really young. I got married at 19. I got pregnant at 18, married at 19. And the whole time I was married, it was, if we have another baby, we'll finally get along better. If we build a home, we'll get along better. And all of these outside things that I kept trying to fix and mm -hmm. do things, things different. And... I never, ever once went in and said, maybe I can heal and change something myself, yeah. something inside me ever. 
And it wasn't until after I got divorced and I started going to Kirk Duncan seminars and doing all that stuff that I realized, holy cow, there's a whole new life I had no idea was possible. And I can work and heal on my stuff was amazing. Right. And so implementing that and teaching my children that is so important to me. I want them to have those tools to be able to heal themselves and work through the emotions that they're going through. What are those? Oh, go ahead. I was going to, we're going to ask the same question. What are those tools? <laughs> what are the and tools? Follow up, what do the conversations look like? Like I'm curious. Like with the kids? Yeah. Like, well, the conversations are not always easy, yeah. right? <laughs> so it first comes to But mind. it's worth it. So just having those conversations, just um, like the other day, I took them all to a breath work class learning how to breathe, learning how to work through their emotions. We went with Shanti mm-hmm. and I took all four of my kids and some of them liked it. Some of them didn't, but they came. And I really feel like those little things that you teach them and those tools will help them down in their life. Even if they don't like it now, it'll help them later. I promise they'll come back to it and love it. Mm-hmm. Um, teaching them how to be active. Um, one thing I do, I don't pay my kids for chores at all. I feel like they are part of the house. They live there too. And they can help and without getting paid. Yeah. But the one thing I, I do is I pay them to read inspiring books. Not just any books. I get to choose. So my daughter's reading the E-Myth right now. Cool. And How to Win Friends and Influence People. There's a ton of books. And then after they read it, I video them. And they have to tell me about the book, what they've learned, and how any of the principles will apply to. They'll take those principles and apply them to their life. That's cool. And so after they do that, then I pay them 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, depending on what I think the book is worth. I like that. So things like that, that I feel like I want to give my kids an opportunity. And I mean, let's be honest, all of our kids will say we screwed them up somehow. Right. <laughs> like like, that's inevitable. It's inevitable. But I think we take what we didn't have as a child and try to help change that with our kids as we move forward. I think one of the biggest things that I'm like, I don't have kids yet, okay. but, um, you know, witnessing Bennett and even hearing you talk is like, what have you found ways to create trust with your kids? Cause you know, that's kind of been one of the biggest conversations in this podcast of like truthful conversations and opening up and being a safe place. So emotions can be shared. How have you found like creating that space has like, what have you done to create that? And how has that affected your relationship with your kids? To be honest, I feel like I'm still working on building that trust. I think Mm -hmm. kids don't really know what to say and how to say it, right? But I feel like if you you sit down with them and you just say, hey, tell me, talk to me. You're not going to get in trouble. Just tell me what happened or tell me where you were or whatever. And sometimes I have to bite my tongue (laughs) and be like, oh, my gosh, I want to be right now. But you just... You're just cool and hold, you know, hold the space for them. And then after they tell you what they told you, then go back and explain why those things were not okay that they did. Right. Why do you think that wasn't okay? And ask them the question. Mm -hmm. What do you think you could have done different? And why do you think that wasn't a good idea? Because they already know. Yeah. Right. We all already know. And it's not easy to be honest all the time. It's not easy to show up authentic all the time. Yeah. But the more you do, the more beneficial it is in all of our lives. That makes sense. Um, as we're wrapping up, we talked about kids and what you're doing with them to kind of give them those tools. What are the tools that you use to be proactive with your mental health or overcome struggles on the mental health aspect? <sighs> That's a great question. Um, I have my sanctuary in my room. I have my sanctuary where I decompress, I write, I journal a ton, I talk to friends, I have a huge network of people that I know I can rely on and count on and that are there for me for support. Um, Meditation, I don't sit there and meditate like you think people do where you lay down and find 30 minutes to meditate. That's not meditation for me. That doesn't work for me. I get too busy and antsy to do that. But when I'm in the shower, I can envision okay, I want to let all the stuff go, right? Through the hot water, just let all the, all the stuff go down into the drain, let it go. But then I envision all of the good things, right? I turn on the cold water and envision all of the great things that I want in my life going through my crown chakra all the way through my body. Cool. So I think those practices of meditation are so much better and easier to implement in our daily life. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. 
So there's so many ways. And I think smiling, you guys, like (laughs) I want to like create this whole thing, but in this whole story, but if you look in a mirror and you're brushing your teeth and you look away, you stamped that image of what you look like until you look in the mirror again, until you see your reflection again. Mm. So if you look in the mirror and you make it a habit every single time to just smile before you look away, it instantly changes the chemical in your brain and you feel better. I like that. So the instant tips, the easy things like that, that you can implement and add to your life make a huge impact. So smile every time you look at the mirror. before you Or look your away. phone or yeah. in the elevator or anywhere. If you smile before you look away, just try it. I promise. Just try it. I'll do it. Look in the mirror and look away and then do it and smile. That's the image you have in the back of your head of what you see yourself as before you see your reflection again. I love that. That is really cool. I love that. Okay. Last question. The hardest one. Just joking. <laughs> so fun. When Jen is gone to the next life or whatever happens after this, life, <laughs> how do you want your kids to remember you? Other people to remember you? What's the legacy you want to leave behind? <laughs> Okay, just the other day, I was trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And I was talking to Jeff Griffin. He's an amazing man. I was talking to him, and he was helping me coach through it. And he goes, Jen, you need to write your obituary. I was like, what? That's just weird. That's <laughs> and he's how I like, got mine. Is that how you got yeah. yours? Uh, yeah. I was like, fine. And so I totally did. Last night, it's on my phone. I totally wrote the whole thing. And it was fascinating because... I don't think I normally would have said that many nice things about myself. (laughs) Like these are all the things I want to do and accomplish. And it gave me uh, so much more direction of Mm -hmm. which way I want to go. That's such a, I think everybody should do that activity. I did that activity to find mission statement and core values. Cause one of the core values that I asked other people was hard work, but it didn't come up in the obituary. I don't want people, Oh, he he worked hard. Yeah. I don't really care about that. Did I leave an impact and how do you measure that impact? Rather than like, you know, there's a lot of people that work hard that don't accomplish anything and don't impact other people. Yeah. But it was the writing your own obituary. It was actually really weird activity. It's weird when you're doing it. Amazing. But it puts you in this different space and mentally, and you really get a lot of clarity. I love that. It's really cool. Jen, you're you're awesome. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Ben. (laughs) How do we connect with you? How do we connect? Yeah, what's your social medias? Or because you've been posting now, right? We've been yeah, talking know, about right? that. <laughs> <laughs> we have been posting. Work I haven't people. been posting. Somebody else is posting. Yes. Let's be honest. Uh, Innerglow, I N R G L O dot com is my photography company. Um, organizedjoy dot com. Same hashtag organizedjoy, and then my personal is Jennifer underscore Gardner eleven. There we go. That's what we. Is that what you want? Yep, Jennifer underscore Gardner 11 is my personal, which I haven't done much with, but I'm going to start. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And what a pleasure it was to get to know you and your story. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you.